Welcome back, it's Haz here. Hope you're all having a blast with Echoes of Mana. I personally have finally got rid of my performance issues and damn, I'm having so much more fun with it. I also rerolled for a final time and I got a fairly good start with some 4 star characters and my new account had such an easier time. That and the new character discussions flying around made me think about a few characters, so let's talk about it. I will post more videos and guides for the game, so if you like this video, consider to subscribe and check out the rest of my content. As mentioned in my 5 tips to start out video, it is highly recommended to focus on 3 strong characters with varying elements as resources are quite limited and stamina also seems to be somewhat limited. I was personally hoping they would go ham with giving out stamina like in Nier Reincarnation. I really liked how it was zero problem over there and the player could just grind and farm pretty much endlessly. In Echoes of Mana, to my surprise, they are more shrewd with giving out free stamina, even though it is split into two categories, with main story and events, or training missions. These two categories use different stamina points if you were wondering. Either way, with all the resource limitations, it seems very important to be careful about who and what you want to level up, and there are reports coming in already that difficulty ramps up quickly, which I also started noticing, but frankly, it is something I'm happy about. Combat has been a good mixture of auto battling normal tiers, but boss fights and co op has been a joy to play, and I've been honestly having as much fun as any 2D action game. Now, finally getting to the point of the video character tier lists have been discussed a lot, and there are already Japanese tier lists floating all over the place, somewhat agreeing about which characters are strong, and I also see their merits. So I would agree with characters such as Duran, Sumo and Popoy being top tier, but apart from strength, there are characters that I think are even more helpful. And until we get more steamrolling characters with power creep in the future banners, they could even be must have. But I'm curious about your opinions. Since it is a global release and events are not showering from all over, and as we just discussed the game ramps up difficulty quite fast, a lot agree that healers are extremely useful if not recommended if you want to have a smooth time progressing in the game. The two main candidates for this role are 4 star Sumo and luckily 3 star Charlotte. I say luckily since at least 3 star Charlotte is someone you can pick 100% as your starter character, or even if you miss her, it shouldn't be too tough to get her from a random harvest role. Honeycomb deserves a special mention here as a last resort. He is given to everyone and can also act as a healer and you can level him up fairly easily considering he is only a 2 star character. And since he is an original new character, I doubt they would let him gather dust. I'm actually quite surprised the first bingo event is giving out free upgrades to Prim instead of one of the new characters. I would have changed the rewards to Honeycomb to help out players with a healer maybe. I found that having a healer makes it so much easier to progress in the game, and Sumo's heal for example is straight up bonkers. With proper MP management, you can keep everyone's health to the max and even have MP remaining, while also being a powerful melee frontliner and a tank. I also got lucky with my memory orbs and I harvested the powerful 4 star rulers of the world that regenerates MP for unused characters. So, even if I run out of MP with Sumo, I can switch to Charlotte to heal others, while Sumo is quickly regenerating his MP. This is also a great opportunity, by the way, to tell you guys not to sleep on memory orbs. They are incredibly powerful and are probably the most important thing once you have a solid core set of characters. Quick tip is that every memory orb will give out a massive increase in all stats once they are leveled to 10, so make sure to do that for your main characters for a big power bump. Since the game also has a big focus on co-op play, I think it's also safe to say that people won't focus on their healers and everyone just wants damage. So having a healer is also great for your future co-op dungeons and farming to help those runs go easier. And healers really make a big difference. Healing is still just one of their abilities and in Sumo's case for example, he's still a powerhouse in damage and defense. So it really isn't like giving up a valuable slot just to heal. It's a straight up upgrade to any team. And since higher level dungeons hit like a truck, I think it's fair to say for now that teams with healers will be able to progress further and push out more content. Like most gotchas, it is likely that they will add more and more powerful characters and our starting team will be replaced eventually, but that is still weeks to months away. And until then, until the power creep sets in, which I do hope won't be too big because I kinda enjoy the challenge of this game. But until it sets in, we'll need to have a balanced team with support skills and tactics. So, 
What do you think? What's your experience so far? Do you also play with healer characters or are you going full damage? Share it with the community and let's help each other. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more Echoes of Mana videos.